Welcome to the optical communication course. Uh, we start here the next model that's about a measurement of a uh, parameters. So we have seen that a fiber attenuation measurement topic and uh, now we'll continue with the discussion of the fiber measurement topic here. So this one is about a measurement of a attenuation that we have seen. Now uh, we say that this one is about a spot measurement technique here so that is about for the given single wavelength. A light source, white light source, it can be a tungsten lamp or any lamp that can be used here. And through that here we have the pin holes and this inference pin and the diaphragm. Okay. So only that supposed to be propagate that particular wavelength or that particular spot size through this pinhole. Okay, that is this why that's why this pinhole is used. Only that particular spot is to be propagated. So that's why the name is about we can say that is spot attribution measurement here. So now everything is same. So same fiber, same everything is all the compounds are same. And here we have to consider that we have to measure the output power for the given length and then we need to cut the fiber from front end that is a 2 meter here and then we measure the a power level so we have we are getting these two lengths length 1 length 2 and according to those two lengths we can calculate that a attenuation there so attenuation calculation just like simply we can consider that attenuation is about what 10 log of this one, 10 we can consider that length 1, length 2 and we can consider that a power output for this length 1 and a length 2 at a length 1 and a length 2 of a fiber. So this way we can measure the attenuation. Now this is about the attenuation measurement. Next about a fiber absorption loss measurement. Now in the fiber absorption loss measurement we should consider that if what will be the loss inside the particular fiber because of that impurity in a material. Generally that absorption loss and that is nothing but a material absorption loss. Means give for a given particular fiber material that loss will be there. So we need to see that at a time of manufacturing, so what type of a fiber we are using and that particular fiber material or that fiber material impurity adding a loss for a given particular fiber. And here the calorimetric measurement of fiber absorption losses measurement. that is used here. So inside the fiber, what will be the material loss or absorption occur? For that purpose, we are using this calorimetric method here. So means the measurement is just like we say a calorimetric method. So in which we need to obtain that what will be the rise in a temperature in the fiber or a given particular material using that calorimetric method because when the light absorbs inside, inside that particular fiber so then there may be a rise in the temperature. So this is about a simple set, setup here and in this simple setup if you see that we have this given particular fiber this one is about we supposed to be consider a fiber here and then that is about we can consider that a temperature measurement unit in a next PPT you can consider that here we can say that for a given particular fiber light is launched from one end and another dummy fiber is to be used 
and in the dummy particle dummy fiber we are supposed to be no light is to be there okay this was about the two different diagram and that is useful for the measurement of the absorption inside the particular fiber so we just measure the temperature for this particular fiber so that's why temperature measurement technique here using this a thermocouple and here we can consider that a two silica capillaries and these two silica capillary tubes and that tubes are surrounded by we can consider that we have this a cube that this tube and they are surrounded by this low refract refractive index liquid and then they are enclosed in the same way that we have seen that that is about this one is about the enclosure here so this one we can consider that is about a two that about we have considered that a tube here this one is about the enclosure for this and here we supposed to be they say that this one is nothing but supposed to be a fiber here okay so likewise the same so now if you see that a thermocouple we have say that it is around it so according to that whichever the changes occur that will be major on the in the nano voltmeter here so that uh, tubes providing the whatever the these two junctions one is about the hot junction another is about a cold junction because a light is launched inside the particular fiber then there may be a rise in the temperature and then that junction is nothing but or that particular tube is nothing but we can say that is about a hot junction another fiber the same or we can say that dummy fiber no light is to be propagating through it okay so and then we need to measure that difference in between this two particular fiber so variation in the particular temperature rises we can measure the what will be the attenuation or what will be the absorption there so for this a formula for measurement here the we can consider that a time constant tc and here we have the the t1 and t2 indicate that a two time points two points in this uh, time and we have this tc here so here a t infinity that is nothing but a temperature of a given particular fiber when there will be light launches inside the particular fiber and then at this particular measurement we have to find out that tt1 and a, a tt2 that is about a time at a two point so that's why we have the two time that is about a t infinity and a tt here so means t infinity means we have the maximum rise in a temperature and a t1 is nothing but that a temperature rise at a time t so that's why we can say that tt1 or tt2 temperature rise at two different points so that is a tt1 and a tt2 here so now just typical diagram if you see that here so we can consider that a typical heating and a cooling curve for the glass fiber sample that is about the fiber material we say that is at infinity so after heating and then we can say that is about a cooling so that is about a heating and cooling curve so this may be a heating curve here and that's particular at this particular heating curve so we are supposed to measure that a two different time points here and from that we can find out a what will be the attenuation so attenuation or a fiber attenuation due to the absorption alpha absorption is equal to c into t infinite and what will be the the power propagating through the fiber under test here and that etc is nothing but the a time or you can say that a time constant that is about a time constant measure between that a two different points here. okay so that is about a tc here and this one is about a a we'll get directly that what will be the absorption
So this way we can measure the absorption. Now if you consider the diagram here, so in this case here, so we supposed to be consider that a measuring the difference in terms of voltmeter voltage here and whichever the difference occur so that is nothing but because of that light launch there is a small difference in the voltage across this particular nanovolt if there is a no rise in a temperature because light absorbs inside the fiber so that's why that fiber get heated or that material get heated so that's why we need to just measure that what will be the temperature rise when a light launch inside the particular fiber and what will be the rise in the temperature occur at this across this particular fiber so that is not nothing but the absorption loss measurement then another measurement technique is nothing but a scattering loss a scattering loss means we say that that light is to be scattered inside the optical fiber core and why that light is scattering because if you see that inside the particular fiber if that material or that fiber core is not throughout that that it doesn't have a constant refractive index throughout the fiber length or some bubbles in that inside that particular fiber occur so there may be a scattering so that's why we can we need to collect that or we need to measure that how much will be the scattering takes place inside that particular fiber so for that purpose we need to use a short fiber or a small fiber and then a light scattered from that particular fiber that will to be detected by using the a6 solar cell so here we have the laser source then a chopper then lock in amplifier for the given particular amplifier weaving optics here lens now here we supposed to be consider the fiber here now then we need to measure the scattering loss inside the core core of a fiber so whichever the light is propagating through that cladding that is to be removed so that's why here the cladding mode stripper cladding mode stripper so that cladding mode stripper means what whichever the light is propagating through that cladding that will be stripped means it will be removed so only inside the particular fiber core what will be the light is propagating through that particular core of a fiber that is to be propagating here so cladding whichever the light is propagating through that cladding that will be removed so that's why a cladding mode stripper now at the uh, initial cladding mode stripper is used or again another at the end again a cladding mode stripper is used now use of this particular cladding mode stripper because a scattering of a light takes place it will be in a forward direction or it will be in a backward direction okay so that's why to avoid that light is to be move in a backward direction or or in a forward direction so we need to use again a stripper at the end so only whichever the light propagating through this particular core and because of that light whatever the scattering occur in that particular core that is to be major using this particular six solar cell this one here we have a scattering cube line with a six solar cell if you see that this one is the structure of this uh, a signal detector or we can say that a six solar cells or you can say that integrated sphere here. so now what will happen here we supposed to be consider that that solar cell cube and that solar cell cube that solar cell cubes are surrounded to this particular fiber so that's why they that index matching fluid is to be used here so that that solar cell will be surrounding to this fiber and then whichever the light is scattered from this particular fiber that will be measured by this a solar cell so now how to measure so before measuring that power or measuring that whatever the light scattered from this fiber 
so we need to use a detector and that signal detector is to be balanced before once that balancing is done then we will we are able to measure that what will be the exactly scattering occur inside the particular fiber if supposed to be we are not able to balance this particular detector so then we are not able to get exactly what will be the scattering occur inside this particular fiber thread so that's why that before measuring so that is to be that signal detector or this particular solar cell is to be balanced there. and the same everything is same that we say laser so stopper everything same only that whatever the light is scattered so that is to be major here so as i told you earlier so that is about before that before this uh, scattering cube that cladding mode stripper and after that cladding mode stripper is used so that is used to remove whichever the light is propagating through the cladding otherwise what will happen so we will get that whichever the light is propagating in the cladding that can be measured by this signal detector so to avoid it so we need to use a cladding mode stripper here and at the end we need to consider that a index matching fluid so index matching fluid so if means your light is propagating through this index matching fluid so it will not reflect that signal again back okay so that's why you can consider that index matching fluid so that will not reflect a signal from this particular fluid if supposed to be signal reflect so it will be again moving through this a fiber there so that's why that index matching fluid is used here and then we measure the a loss so loss is to be major loss due to the scattering is nothing but what in terms of a, a kilometer we have to measure so that's why for a given particular length of the fiber so what will be the scattering occur and then we have to consider that log log logarithmic of what will be the optical power and what will be the optical power when your light is is scattered there so that's why p optical power and p fc that is about a optical power scatter from the given length of the fiber there so this way we can measure that what will be the scattering loss inside the particular fiber there so we can consider that if supposed to be a optical power is greater than that scattering power then we can remove that a logarithmic scale and we'll get that a scattering loss is nothing but a 4.343 by length in terms of kilometer by psc by pure so in this case we measure that a scattering loss per kilometer of a, a length here now this is about a measurement in terms of a power even we can measurement measure the optical that scattering loss in terms of a voltage here so in that case we supposed to be consider that a voltage reading at a scattered optical power or at the what will be the total optical power within that particular fiber so that's why we say that a voltage at a scattering optical power and voltage at the optical power so that we can calculate that a absorption scattering scattering loss measurement or a what will be the power absorbed inside the particular fiber there so this is about the absorption measurement or absorption technique so in that absorption technique we have seen that a scattering loss measurement technique one is about a calorimetric measurement of a fiber absorption loss here and that attenuation measurement that we have seen that is about the attenuation measurement now next we will see that a numerical aperture measurement technique now in the numerical aperture measurement technique so we need to focus that light on some particular object now this one is about a source the light from the source here we have the fiber and then light is to be projected on a particular screen and we need to measure that from the fiber to the screen the distance and what will be the aperture of this particular light so that is about a d 
T is nothing but the aperture of a light. Means light focus here from the a fiber. Okay, so this way here on this particular screen here. So that's why we will get that a particular aperture here. Okay, so this is about a aperture. So we have the a fiber. So we can consider that if what will be the a particular measurement, numerical measurement, we need to be consider that a fiber holder here and that fiber holder that can be a rotating there and according to that we can find out the what will be the aperture there and then we can find out that from this spot size and the distance from that spot we can calculate that a theta max and theta max here so this is about a x distance from the fiber to the screen and the d is nothing but the aperture here okay that is about a spot size and the distance of the spot we will get that the theta max is equal to tan inverse of d by 2x or we will get that directly a numerical aperture that is theta max is equal to d by 4x square plus d square so this way we will calculate that a numerical aperture there. now uh, we can obtain that a maximum acceptance angle here because we supposed to be here the theta max is nothing but the maximum acceptance angle of a optical fiber so according to that we will get that a, a numerical aperture here so in that case we need to consider that a maximum light or maximum intensity is propagating through the fiber So if suppose we say that if we say that that fiber and that screen is very close or a very far so according to that numerical aperture value will be higher or a lower here so according we see that what will be the a numerical aperture for this fiber and it is depending upon that a core of a, a fiber because from the core of a fiber okay likewise so we can say, say that it is projected somewhere on this aperture here are we supposed to be considered that this is about the area for the detector and according to that we can detect that whatever the a signal there so likewise so according to that we can find out that what will be the numerical aperture of a fiber now next about a mode field diameter so that mode field diameter means what for a given fiber what will be the distributions of a light inside the core of a optical fiber so that is that will gives us the a field distribution inside the fiber and that is called as a mode field diameter or a mode field distribution of a given particular fiber now here you can see that this is about a cladding this one is about a core now this is about a distribution of a light here we have taken the reference in terms of electric field and here at the center we supposed to be say that that is the radial distance of a optical fiber core fiber that is r is equal to 0 that is radius and from this to r here we say that this one is the maximum so that what will be the maximum value and from that maximum to this particular particular portion and according to that we can find out that what will be the mode field diameter and for this mode field diameter if supposed to be if we consider the a single mode fiber so we can easily obtain that what will be the mode field diameter for the given particular fiber ok that is about a mode field diameter of a particular fiber so distributions of a field across this particular fiber and that will give us the mode field diameter of a optical fiber so this one we have seen attenuation measurement loss and all now next is about a, a measurement is nothing but a, a dispersion measurement now in the case of a dispersion measurement 
So what will the light is propagating to the fiber? And then light is supposed to be, we can say that information that is in the form of a pulse. But at the end, that pulse broadening is takes place. And that pulse broadening is nothing but the dispersion. So now that broadening of a pulse can be measured in a two ways. That is one way we can measure in terms of a time domain measurement or another we can consider that a frequency domain measurement. There are the two domain measurements. If supposed to be we consider that a time domain measurement, so in that case, for the dispersion measurement, if supposed to be we consider the time domain measurement, so we require a large pan for the measurement measuring that a particular sample because here we supposed to be propagating the pulse and then that pulse is propagating and dispersion is augur in terms of a, a time span there. So we require that a knowledge of what will be the light is propagating and what will be the rate of it. So that's why we supposed to be consider that a sampling or oscilloscope. Now dispersion means what? There may be a delay because a light is delayed or light will be broadening. Okay, there will be a delay as well as the there may be a broadening of the pulse, whichever the world pulse we are transmitting, the pulse broadening it takes place. And because of that pulse broadening, there will be a overlapping of the pulses and that will arise as the intersymbol interference inside the fiber. And that will reduce the information capacity of the fiber there. So that's why to avoid it, so we need to use a measurement of the what will be the fiber dispersion measurement. Now if you see that for the measuring that a dispersion, so we need to consider that what will be the a pulse driver or we can say that hey, that is about the a pulse is to be propagating here. So now if we consider that what type of fiber, so we need to talk about the fiber. So there are the two types of a dispersion along according to the fiber. We say that that is about the intermodal dispersion. If we have the multimode fiber and intramodal dispersion, if we have the single mode fiber. So means we can say that intramodal dispersion again there in a multimode fiber, but as compared to the intramodal dispersion, intermodal dispersion is a large. So that's why we say that a for a multimode fiber, there will be a intermodal dispersion. And for the single mode fiber, we supposed to be obtain that a intramodal dispersion. There is no intermodal dispersion inside the fiber there. And again, while measuring the or while measuring the dispersion, so we need to consider that a equilibrium mode dispersion or equilibrium mode distribution inside the fiber and then we can use a mode scrambler or a filter and that will use to produce or to provide the steady state mode distribution or equilibrium mode distribution inside the a fiber there. Now dispersion is nothing but what a broadening of a pulse. So in that case to measure that a what will be the broadening. So we need to measure that at across this what will be the out output power with respect to a time. So that's why what will be the pulse propagating and what will be the input optical power. So if you consider that a pulse power response and input optical power inside the fiber. So across this particular detector, what will be the output power? So output power is nothing but what? A convolution of what? What will be the pulse and this input of optical power there. So that is about a, we can say that this is about a P of, of T is equal to impulse as into a whatever the EIT. So this will gives us the what will be the optical output power there. And that is in terms of a, a time double. 
but in terms of a frequency domain so we can write the function in terms of a, a frequency so that's why the output power with with respect to particular frequency and here a power transfer function with respect to that what will be the a fourier transfer function for this h of t and similarly we can obtain that equation in terms of a, a frequency domain so this is thus we can say that a dispersion measurement can be in terms of a time domain or we can say that we can do a in terms of a, a frequency domain so we try to do or we try to explain a dispersion in terms of a, a time domain measurement so now in a time domain measurement if you see that we have the same experimental setup here we have a pulse is to be propagating or we can say that a signal so that's why we can say that a pulse driver and that pulses propagating through this particular fiber and that have the narrow pulses and then because of that narrow pulses we can measure that what will be the broadening occur at the end so that's why that pulses travel through the fiber that pulses are a narrow pulses and then we can measure at the end what will be the broadening occur and that broadening is nothing but the dispersion there so we supposed to be consider that a fiber length is to be 1 kilometer or a 2 kilometer and then we can use the same setup that is about a source we supposed to be consider the lens for this then a beam splitter so up at actual wavelength is to be propagating and a diaphragm for this particular distributions only okay so that is about we say that this particular diagram will express you what will be the light launches inside the particular fiber now if you see that light propagating through that then we have the detector and then a detector measure that what will be the light or intensity and that detected light that will be sample here so we use and that sampling oscilloscope or a fast sampling oscilloscope so that it will display that what will be the pulse received at the receiver there and then we here a beam splitter here that beam splitter that will be used to trigger the providing trigger to this a sampling oscillus globe for at what particular input pulse is propagating through this particular fiber so that we supposed to measure that what will be the broadening occur inside the or through that particular fiber there so we sub consider that a small length of the fiber and then we use a technique again a, we can consider that a cutback technique and a measure the pulse so for a dispersion measurement we supposed to be consider that it different different pulses to be propagating and according to that we can measure the a pulses what will be the broadening occur inside the fiber there now here a input pulse is propagating and here we are we supposed to be measure that width of that input pulse and at the receiver we need to measure that width of the output pulse and the difference between that whatever the input pulse and what will be the output pulse there and that is nothing but the a broadening there so we measure the directly what will be the pulse broadening in with respect to the length so now for that here we supposed to be consider that here the pulse broadening we can supposed to measure that what will be the pulse broadening and what will be the input pulse here 
with respect to the given length and this will gives us the a dispersion or a pulse dispersion so that is about the output pulse and this one is about the input pulse and that difference with respect to the a length here so that's why we will get that here a pulse dispersion inside the fiber or pulse broadening with respect to that whatever the length of the a fiber here. and according to that we can find out a what will be the a 3 dB optical bandwidth of the fiber using that toe here. Now here it is about a time domain. So we measure the what will be the pulse width. Okay, that is in terms of a time. So that's why we will get that optical bandwidth with respect to that what will be the impulse response or what will be the pulse launch inside the particular fiber. So that's why we can say that a tau of 3 dB. So we will get that a optical bandwidth. And that optical bandwidth that is in terms of a, a pulse broadening. Okay. So, so we can suppose to be ex see that the experimental arrangement here. So we have a pulse generator, multi wavelength source. This one is about a test sample. We can see that a fiber here. Here we have a detector. From the detector, we supposed to be consider that this is about an oscilloscope to detect a signal that is about a in. And whichever the pulse is to be propagating through the source, that will be given the trigger. And delay generator is what? Because there is a delay here for measuring the for signal propagation. So that's why that particular delay generate delay is to be generated here so that we can trigger at that particular a pulse only. Okay, so that's why there is a delay. So this is about a oscilloscope here. So that trigger pulse and this is about a input pulse. So what what will be the measurement is to be done. Okay, so that is about the a dispersion measurement with respect to that a delay difference with respect to that a length here. So again, we supposed to be consider that a cutback uh, cutback technique. So in that case, we supposed to be consider the two different length, length one and a length two. And then according to that, we can find out that what will be the group delay per unit length here and according to that we can find out a chromatic dispersion using that whatever the a delay difference for the length difference of the fiber there and we supposed to be measure that a whatever the dispersion occur so that's why a dispersion slope in terms of with respect to that wavelength we can obtain here so this is about a a time domain measurement here. So another measurement we say that is about a, a frequency domain, domain measurement. So instead of measuring that a width of the pulse, here we are measuring that for the given pulse, what will be the spectrum? Okay, what will be the spectrum of a pulse or what will be the spectrum of a your input signal? So now this frequency domain measurement why it is preferred because it will provide the a bandwidth accurate bandwidth of your optical fiber so if supposed to be if we use a time domain measurement it is just providing the what will be the bandwidth in terms of a time domain but here it is only it is measuring in terms of a frequency so that's why it will provide the accurate measurement of the bandwidth in terms of a frequency domain measurement. So now here in this case we need to measure that one or two frequency earlier we say that we need to measure in terms of a one or two input pulses we can measure here in terms of a one or two frequencies and then according to that we can measure the what will be the dispersion occur here. So in this case here we supposed to be consider that a signal that is about a signal is a modulated here and that is about that signal is propagating through the fiber that is about a pulse driver we have a laser then your signal is in term form that is a modulated signal then we have the weaving optics to verify whatever the signals we have then we have the variable diaphragm we supposed to be consider here 
and then uh, we have the optical fiber then a detector diode and here we can say that what is the signal is to be measured now here that difference is about what a spectrum analyzer is used so spectrum analyzer that is used here to obtain a what will be the a frequency signal supposed to be propagating through the fiber okay that is about a we can say that that is about a pulse driver that we can supposed to be consider that here it is modulated using that a pulse the signal is modulated using this pulse driver here okay means what we can say that a stripped oscillator here so your signal is modulated so modulated signal is propagating and here we are measuring that what will be the sf frequency signal and this particular spectrum analyzer is measuring that a what will be the sf frequency signal and that will be major continuously or on the spectrum analyzer and then this way we can find out the spectrum of the given particular signal or it will provide the information about that whatever the signal is propagating through this particular fiber but it doesn't if you consider that this particular a fiber we suppose to be consider that what will be the difference in the frequency that is to be measured but it is not able to measure that what will be the phase there so for the phase me measurement we need to suppose to be use a another technique here that is about a we suppose to be consider that it that is about a swift frequency measurement so it will provide the information regarding the frequency as well as in terms of a, a phase here okay so now we suppose to be consider that your high frequency oscillator signal as well as we are going to be consider that a measuring that a frequency of the signal and through this okay so now here we have the spectrum analyzer a swift oscillator driver modulator here lens the fiber detector frequency selector amplifier whatever the frequency selection is there and then it will display the whatever the whatever the changes occurs in that particular frequency signal so whichever the optical signal is propagating and that signal is modulated at a given particular frequency and that is to be measured with respect to that a given length so that is what we can say that l divided by vg that is about a group velocity that is about length and that is the tau g here it is measured with respect to that what will be the a difference here. okay so now we can say that for a given particular envelope what will be the difference here so that is to measure and according to that we can measure there what will be the phase shifted with respect to that twice pi tau g length and tm here what is the modulation period so according to that we can measure the if i am here so we will calculate that a specific group delay with respect to that particular phase here and according to that we will measure that what will be the dispersion occur so that is about a dispersion measurement next is about we can see that a refractive index measurement here so in the refractive index measurement we need to consider that a different interference filter here or we supposed to be consider that a interference microscope that is used to define or that is used to obtain the what will be the refractive index profile of the optical fiber so we'll see that in this technique here the microscope is used that is about a mass gender interferometer here and then it will here this beam splitter 
and this means about a same mirror here so we supposed to be propagating and then according to that we can see that interference finger pattern obtained with an interference microscope from a graded index fiber because if you consider that a strip index fiber that reflected index index profile is a constant but if we wanted to measure that refractive index profile so then we need to consider that a graded index fiber because a graded index fiber refractive index profile it will be vary with respect to the radius of the core so this is about a interferometer interferometer and that will measure the refractive index profile of the fiber here. so we measure that with respect to the radius here so this is about the profile of a refractive index profile for the given particular filter